Turn with me to John chapter 4, verse 10. If you can get it on the screen for me, please. John chapter 4, verse 10. And can I ask you to come and read that for us, please? Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Thank you, Andrew. Jesus answered her, This is the woman at the Samaritan well. He's speaking to her, if he knew the gift of God, who is Christ, and who, is, who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Let me repeat this one. If you knew the gift of God, who is Jesus, and who is it that asks you for a drink, Jesus is asking this woman for a drink, you would have asked Jesus, and he would have given you living water. I just uh, explained to you. Shall we close our eyes? Heavenly Father, we just come to you and ask you and your help to enrich our soul, our spirit, and our mind, our body, so that we can recognize you, we can know you better this morning, and we, our life can be transformed, our life can be changed. Holy Spirit, have your way. And you can fill our life with your knowledge and with your grace and mercies. We don't go back empty-handed from this place. It's not the way we have come into this place. But we go back with full love. Full of arrows against the work of the enemy full of strength and power and authority and healing, full of humility, joy and strength, and full of your grace, knowing you better. Minister to our soul and our spirit, O oh God. We humble ourselves as you humble yourself, even up to the cross. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, God's people said amen. Jesus was at the cross. Many of you might know, Jesus said, I'm thirsty. Any, how many of you read that? Jesus said, I'm thirsty. See, now, when you come to this chapter, fourth chapter of John, he is saying to this woman, this called Samaritan woman, If you, if you knew who is standing in front of you or who is sitting in front of me, you, you would have asked me the water. I would have given you the living water. This Samaritan woman had a lot of problem in her life. She was not a Jew. She was not belonging to the society Jesus Christ came for. Jesus came for the Jews. Samaritans are sort of, uh, you know, outside the parameter of the Israelis, the Jews at the time. It is not even right for a man or a Jew to speak to the gender. You know, a lot of restriction, a lot of problem there. But Jesus crossed the barrier and even left his disciples and come to this woman and he's sitting at the well and this and Jesus is speaking to this woman. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him. Jesus is asking for a drink. You would have asked the drink in the first place. He would have given you the living waters. The living water would have been given to you. Once you have this water, you will never be thirsty again. You will never have the problem that you faced with your husbands. Sir. 
the only reason what Jesus was talking is you do not know who is standing in front of you. You got all this problem, you are changing husband to husband to husband to husband. Even if the best husband is given to you, it's not going to work in your life. You are not recognized to who is standing in front of you. Who is asking the water to you? The story is, she didn't recognize who is this. She had no reason to know who he is. She had her problem, but she did not know the solution. She's thinking, if I have all these things, if I have the new husband, if I have that husband, if the husband is like this, all my problem will be solved. Or if I have a good health, all my problem will be solved. Or if I have a lot of finances, all my problem will be solved. You know, if I have a big church, you know, sometimes people even think, all my, all my desires, everything will be solved. Because the problem could be simply solved only by recognizing who is standing in front of me. Church, you know, I can go from beginning to the end in the word of God. Jesus said the same word at the cross. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. He didn't receive the drink from this woman at a Samaritan well. He didn't receive or he didn't drink even though Jesus asked at the cross of Calvary, I'm thirsty. He didn't drink the drink. Jesus is standing by your side to say, I'm thirsty. Can I have a drink? If you knew me, who I am standing by your side, you would have asked me a drink. I would have given you the drink. All your problem would be gone. This morning I want to encourage you in a Christian walk, the problem continues in people's life. It's not that they, they didn't, they, they got it wrong. It's the lack of understanding of who is standing in front of me. Who is standing in front of me? When he's seeking this God, in the midst of all the problem and difficulties and hardships and difficulty you are going through, only one thing is needed is to recognize who you are, recognize who is standing in front of you in your life. God, I've given my life to Jesus, but it seems like all the same. I spend time with God, I go from Sunday to Sunday, Thursday to Thursday, Wednesday to Wednesday. I give my tithe and offering, I give everything there, but what is happening? Nothing is happening to me. But I want to church. Early church done the same mistake. Disciple did the same mistake. Even the heathen did the same mistake did not realize who is standing in front of me. You know, sometimes the world recognizes you, who you are. Two servant girls come. Yesterday I was in a, in a grocery, in a, in a supermarket. One lady, I never met this lady. This lady came nearer to me and said of a thing, I need to take a photograph with this man. <laughs> I never met this lady before. She was a sweet English lady. I didn't ask who you are, what you are, and uh, you know, she wanted to take a photograph. You know, I am pushing the trolley with all the, all the item buying for the shop. I knew this lady knew me who I am. I don't know this lady who is. She. Because she would have come for all the hundreds, 400 people come to the church, they would know you who you are. She was nasty, she was not a nasty woman, or she was not a funny woman, but I didn't ask a question. Oh, hello, how are you? What a wonderful day. At least the sun is shining. The usual talk. <laughs> the world recognized who you are. Peter thought that nobody would know he was sitting in a place, and the servant girl come, you are with, you are with Jesus. Oh, no, no, I don't know him at all. And he would have said all the words, 
all the F word, S word, everything he would have said. And then another woman come here. Oh, Peter, you are Peter. You are one of the disciples of Jesus. Jesus is arrested and he's being interrogated and Peter is afraid and scared. Jesus is being crucified. He's at the cross of Calvary. And here is a centurion who was in charge of the crucifixion. He is saying, this is truly the Son of God. You know, he is a centurion in charge of crucifying Jesus. He recognized this is the Son of God. This is truly the Son of God. Today morning, I want to tell you, our many of the problem will be solved if we recognize who is standing in front of me. We try to recognize our children. We recognize our problem. We recognize the working place. We recognize everything. We recognize the husband. We put a mark for him. We recognize the wife and we put a mark for them. We just see everything there, but we fail to recognize who he is. Even the robber of the, th uh, the, is a, is a thief at the Calvary. There were two robbers on two sides. One on the left of Jesus, one on the right of Jesus. All of them were crucified there, including Jesus. One said, when you come into the heavens, when you come into the paradise, remember me. Because that, that thief, he recognized Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Savior. Even in the pain and the sorrow, Jesus turned around to say, today you will be with me in paradise. Church, I wanted to tell you, I wanted to encourage you. If he knew who is standing in front of you, who is asking you for this water, I am thirsty. I am thirsty. There is a sound that is coming from Calvary. The sound is Christ Jesus is saying, I am thirsty. They put the pole. Here you are, Jesus. Jesus. The sound is for you and me. The sound is for you and me. I am thirsty. Can you reach to the Samaritan town? Can you reach to the town in Farnworth? Why didn't Jesus drink? But he reached out to the Samaritan town. The chapter goes on to say the whole community got saved. You know, I'm standing in front of you. I'm hearing the sound. Jesus is saying, I'm thirsty. Today you may be thinking, God, I have got lots of problems, difficulties. And you believe that God will solve you. See, the same Jesus when he's saying, I'm thirsty, so can you? I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, but he's pouring out. But I have got a river of life that is flowing from the throne room. If you drink from that, you will never be thirsty. God is asking the church, God is asking the people to say, do you know, do you perceive, do you see? When he sees God's ways, it changes our life. When you see God's ways and God's, God's way, what does he want for me? You know, often people say, they put that problem and finally say, I do not know, Pastor, what to do. I do not know, Pastor. You know very well what to do. But you choose to believe you do not know what to do. Because the sound is clear. If you knew who is standing, who is asking for the water to you, you would have given. The godly principle is the same thing. God wanted to do a miracle in the life of this woman. She's having cooking a lost meal. What do you have got? Give me the first, give me that fruit. Give me, make me, a, bring me a jar of water. He's a prophet. He's going to do a great miracle. He could have made a cup of water. He could have made a big, you know, a big container of water. But he was asking the woman, can you bring me a jar of water? Can you make me something here? Because God is about to do something. He's saying, I am thirsty. I'm hungry. 
You given me something when I was hungry. I was thirsty. You come and pour out. I was lonely. You come and see me. Pastor, I don't know what to do. I'm helping. Just to wake up. Just to look at who is standing in front of you. When you see who is standing in front of you. The same Calvary. The same Calvary. But it's an empty cross. But the sound is coming from the empty cross. The sound is coming from the throne room to the cross. From the cross it is coming to you. Can you give? I am thirsty. When we recognize, say in the midst of the problem, I'm ministering to people with lots of difficulty, lots of problem. Church, we need to be matured. We need to be moving in the things of God to understand more of you, God. First recognize him. When you recognize, you know why? He would have given you living waters, not just the water for one day, not just the water for one marriage. God would have given you water for all the days of your life. Your cup will be overflowing. Please tell your neighbor, your cup will be overflowing. When God fills your life, it will be overflowing. That's what Jesus, Jesus is saying here. If he asked me, I would have given him I would have given you the living water. Living water is not a glass of water. Oh, blessed Gemma brought me another hot water. I thought it's good. Uh, it was really prophetic. You know, she don't bring water every day. Do you? No, you don't. Because all things, God knew what he's doing, what he's talking, what he's going to bring in. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. But you would have asked him, but he would have given you water. God, my life changed. My life changed. Hallelujah. When you recognize, this morning I want to encourage you in all the difficulties and all the things you are going through in your life, the only thing you need to do is recognize God. Even in the midst of sadness, even in the midst of your sickness, even in the midst of your lacks, even in the, in the midst of your problem, your needs, need for the family, need for the children, need for yourself, need for everything. We are on this earth. Bible says you will have troubles, but I have overcome the world. You have a Savior who overcome everything for you. He overcame the sickness, the Bible says, by his stripes you are healed. He will bless you according to his riches in glory. According to his riches, he so rich, all the silver and gold, everything belongs to him. According to his riches, he will give you. Only thing is, I'm standing in front of a God he knew. I would have given you, I would have given you something. See, don't say, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I tell you, that is a wrong statement. You know everything when you recognize. Here is a savior. The sound is coming from Calvary. I am thirsty. Can you give me some water? Can you give me some water? God wants to draw you in. God wants to draw you in. This is what God is. God wants to draw you into a dialogue with him. God wants to draw you into a dialogue with him. That's why I didn't go to the biggest universities to study because the Lord God draw me in and pour out his spirit, pour out the living water. Church, when he draw you near, you engage him and see who you are, Lord. Take my slippers off, take my shoes off, take my pride off, take my arrogance off, take my reservation off, take my stupid understanding off. God, I wanted to surrender. It is you who are standing in front of me. Don't fall down before God with the shoes attached to your feet. God, here I am. If he knew who is here, he would have given you living waters. This morning when we are presence of God, he is just by your side. What he said, tap, 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 I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty, my daughter. I'm thirsty, my son. I said, really? Is it really? He want to draw you in. He want to draw you in closer to him. I see people do not know and run away from him. 
Run away from him. If I have half of the estate, I'll be better off. Give me half of the estate. He wouldn't mind giving the half of the estate. But you know why? One day he will be hungry. I better off have the, 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 the stuff that is thrown away from my father's house than I'm eating the pig's fodder here. Because I'm hungry for the wrong thing. I'm, my thirst, all those things will come to an end. If I have this living water, I recognize, God, you are standing in front of me. You know, you are battered by the troubles, difficulties. Go through so many struggles. In all these things, if you recognize, God, he has got a greater solution for every one of your problems. Don't tell another moment you do not know. Because God's word has got every answer, everything. When he come before you, he, oh, this, this woman was asking, the rope is, the, you don't have any rope, you don't have any bucket, the well is so deep. Don't fill God with all this nonsense. He is the creator, he knows the deep, he knows the height, he knows the width of the universe, he can reach to anywhere that you and I cannot reach. Shall we shout hallelujah? Don't tell this nonsense to God. Don't tell this nonsense to Jesus. I don't know. In other words, you are telling God, you don't know either, but I'm standing before you. I don't know who the heck you are. I see so, so many rude people in the church, in the kingdom of God. When you know, throw my slippers away. I'm going to fall down on the feet of God. He's going to do greater things for me. Your sickness would be gone. Your fear would be gone. Your problem would be gone. Wake up. Soul, let your eyes be open. You will become Paul. Let the, let the scales fall out of your eyes. Then you see that the journey in front of you. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God we have. Let me take you to a, a chapter to read you something here. Disciple done the same mistake. <coughs> Matthew chapter 14, verse 25 to 27. Paul, can you come and read that for me, please? Matthew chapter 14, verse 25 to 27. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Thank you, Paul. The Bible says the boat was buffeted. Buffeted means, you know, if you know the British waves and the, throughout the night I couldn't sleep much because, you know, I was just praying in the spirit for various things and uh, you see, something, something, the sound and all the waves. This is not a seashore. This is Farnworth, uh, far away from the seashore. But the sound and everything, I wanted fresh air, so I leave the window open, even in the winter. I wanted the fresh air. Even if it is cold, doesn't matter. And I, the noise and everything was happening. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me. You know, this is exactly what was happening with the disciples. The wind was buffeting completely. The boat was in trouble. Because previously, what Jesus did, Jesus said, you know, you take the boat and go away. I'm going to pray. Jesus was praying with his father. He was praying to his father and praying and praying for his disciple, what not. And just before the dawn, the Bible says, just before the dawn, and Jesus was walking towards the boat. They were far away from the land. You know, today you may be far away from the land wherever you have come from. This boat was far away from the land, but in the midst of trouble. The Bible says the boat was buffeted by the waves and the wind and the problem. They were so scared and afraid. But suddenly, early in the morning, just before the dawn, Jesus was walking on the water towards the boat. Just imagine the boat is in serious trouble. Jesus is walking towards the boat. Today, you may be thinking... God, my lifeboat is in serious trouble. I am so terrified. I am so frightened. I don't know what is going to come. What, how, what is the next meal is going to come? How I am going to be managing all my finances? How I am going to manage my children? How I am going to manage, the, manage, my, manage my supplies, manage my food, manage my job? In the midst of all these things, you feel like your boat is completely buffeted. It's about to sink. 
Because the way from this side, the way from that side, the way from the pastor, the way from... Everything seems like I am about to drown. What I am going to do? But Jesus is calmly walking towards you. Jesus is calmly walking towards this boat. There's a great turmoil in the boat. There's a big turmoil. What shall we do? The Bible says they were terrified. They were pity, pitified. They were completely terrified. Completely what to do? Today, your life may be in the same position. God, lots of problems. Nobody knows. Pastor Sam do not know. You do not know my family situation. My children are like this. My marriage is like this. My wife is like this. My husband is like this. My boyfriend is like this. My finance is like this. My position is like this. My employment is like this. But Jesus is walking towards your boat. Please tell your neighbor, Jesus is walking towards your boat. What the Bible says, they didn't recognize him. Who is? Jesus, the very same Jesus. Maybe six hours ago, four hours ago, I can calculate the time. The very same Jesus is walking towards the turmoil and problem and difficulty. But they, they didn't recognize him. They thought, they, you know what they did? They were much more terrified. <laughs> Don't go to Pastor Sam and this is what he's going to say. Don't ask Brian, he will say this one. Don't ask Andrew, this is what he would say. So you run away, terrified. You try to build something for your own where you can put your head and do. Terrified. Not only terrified, also it says it's a ghost. That woman didn't recognize. If you recognize me, who you are talking to, Samaritan woman, all your marriage problem would be sorted. Five marriages deeply in trouble. Now Jesus is walking towards your boat, and but you are thinking it's a ghost. Is another ghost. I met all the ghosts. It's another ghost. I can't trust anybody. It's another ghost. You are buffeted by the wind. You are in trouble and difficulties. But you see, you are thinking it's a ghost. But Jesus determined to, I thought, you know, if I were me, oh, you know, fools, I've been with them, did all the miracle, I'm coming towards them. They are telling me I'm a ghost and, uh, and I would have turned around, okay, let me go back to the shore and pray to my father <laughs> for some more time. But Jesus didn't. But Jesus walked towards the boat. In the midst of all your problems and difficulties, he's still walking towards your boat. He come closer. They didn't, still didn't recognize. Then he's saying to them, and he cried, they, finally they go into hysteria, the sound is rising, they're speaking loud, you know, nobody understand me, I am lost and everything is gone, everything is this, everything is going to be lost, all the negative words and everything. They cried out in fear, the Bible says. I watch such people. In my life I come across every day. Go to the prison, visit people there I come across. I go to different, different places in my offices, people come, the same story. And I go to the prison to help people, the same story. Hospital, I go, tell the same story. It's not just one person I come across every day in my life. But I tell you, the Savior is in front of you. There is a sound that is coming from Calvary. I'm thirsty. What for? Thirsty to engage you in the conversation. Open up your eyes. Now we let the song, open my eyes, O oh Lord. You know, when you open the eyes, what do you see? It's not your problem, it's not your difficulty, how bad your marriage was, how troubled you are, how buffeted by the wind, my boat is going to sink. Sometimes you think, better me die, let me throw them out of the boat. Okay, throw me into the deep sea. You are a Hebrew? Please tell your neighbor you are a Hebrew. Hebrew. 
God will send you even the whales there to swallow you up. There is no place you can hide. The boat is in turmoil. Understanding God, I wanted, I wanted you. Throw me into the sea. You can be like Jonah. Wake up today. God is coming to meet up with me. Cried out in fear. Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. Take courage. Please tell you never take courage. Get yourself together. Don't break into pieces. Get yourself. Get real. Get a grip. Is that what they say in England? Get a grip. <laughs> Take courage. Don't be afraid. No matter what it is, what ill health, whatever it is said, don't be afraid. Just watch what is, what is happening. It is me. I am the one who done the miracle. I am the one who done all the, all the healing. I am the one who is standing in front of you. The same Jesus is crying from the throne room of God, saying, I am thirsty. To pull you into a conversation, to pull you into a dialogue, say to you, take courage. Jesus was coming towards that boat. Why it is written on the Bible? So that one day men of God can preach to you, encourage you. God would say to you, why the Holy Spirit was poured upon Pastor Sam one day when I asked him, so that I can pour out, I can pour out into other people's life. It's not that you suddenly got a revelation from somewhere, God, I am prepared to lay my life down when God pours out in your life so you can pour out to others. That's why I said, the living water will flow from you. You would have asked me, I would have given you a living water. Living water means it is coming from a spring. It never stops in the midst of your problem, in the midst of all your needs. The living water, nobody can stop. You know, when I was a small boy, we had a spring in our garden, in the backside of our garden, further up there. I go there, and the spring comes up early in the morning. It's everywhere cold. Not cold as it is in England, but in the winter, sorry, in the Christmas time, it can be a bit chilly. But I used to go to this place where the brooks are. The spring is coming up. I put all my pressure and press this down. Can I stop this water? You know, when you're a small boy, you play with these things. You know, you put your you know, hand against the pipe. Can you hold this pipe so it doesn't really flow? So I used to try with this thing. It's nice and warm. The water is very hot. Not hot spring as it is. The water that is coming from this spring is very warm. But you can't stop this spring. It is so powerful. I don't know where it is coming from. It completely flow. When you come to God, it's living water. It's flowing from nothing can stop in this world. You don't know how tough it is. Your boat is pushed into the place and you are terrified. You think it is a ghost. But I tell you, who is standing in front of you? <coughs> is Christ Jesus, the King of King and the Lord of Lord. He would say to you, my daughter, take courage. Don't be dismayed. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be terrified. Don't cry out in fear. Whatever the frame of mind. See, whatever their frame of mind, doubt, fear, and desperation, abandoned, all those feelings must have been there with them. If Jesus had come back with me, if there is a God Jesus and he would have come with me, the boat will not be in trouble. You know, when, 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 when you come to Lazarus' uh, sisters, they said, if you were with us, my brother would not have died. You blame it on God and everything. Whatever your frame of mind is, whatever the frame of mind is, God in his nature still walk into your boat. Hello? That is the nature of this God. You can't blame him, oh, if God is there, what should happen? God still walk into the boat and he calmed the waves and the seas completely. He shut everything down. This morning, I want to encourage you, take courage. Take courage, take courage. It is me who died for you. It is nobody else. I am the one who died for you. I am rose again. I am here for you. 
Take courage, take courage, take courage. When you trust in God's word, you have got a full proof. You've got a completely a victory because he never let you down, never. It seems like temporarily you are facing some issues. When you put your trust in him, allow him to be in your boat. God, you are in my boat. I throw everything out. All the things I thrown out. But I wanted you to be in my boat. This Jesus, when he come into our life, you know what he does? He just give you the living water. In him, we are all satisfied. In him, we have got every answer. See, God wants us to open up our eyes. His powerful song. I didn't tell Nabil what song to sing. He sang the song, Open Up My Eyes, God. I think that was the first song. Nabil, where are you? Is that, is that the song, first song? You see, God coordinates. I don't give them to sing this song or that song. Luke chapter 24. See, we can be so close in the kingdom of God. I'm not trying to be spooky, but I tell you, if you realize the wonderful presence of God, you don't have a sinful life, you don't have the struggle, you depend on him. You depend upon this Holy Spirit. You know, people think sometimes, people think that I'm stupid sometimes. I tell you, in my life, in the 17 years of my young life, I started with this God. I used to be very jittery about him. You know, in the sense, the Lord God is there. I do things which many people don't understand, won't understand, will you ever understand. But I tell you, this God, when he's really by the side, he's so mighty, so powerful, and you yield to him. When you yield to him, he does amazing things in our life. Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 12. Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to, 13 to 32. And you read it at home. And I will just quickly pass on very quickly. This is Jesus risen from the dead. He said, I'm hungry and thirsty. And, you know, I'm thirsty. And uh, all those things happened. Jesus rose from the dead. And he is traveling to a, he appears though he's traveling to a town called Emmaus. It's, I'm not, I wanted to tell you one or two things here. Quickly pass on. And the disciples were traveling towards this village called Yamas. Because they are travel. What happened in Jerusalem was so many things. Jesus was crucified and he was the Messiah. They thought he's a prophet. And they're traveling towards Yamas so they didn't escape from the place. I don't know what frame of mind the disciples were. They are walking towards Yamas. That's the journey. But now, Jesus suddenly appeared as a stranger to them. And he was walking alongside. You know the Bible says here, they, they, the Bible says, just to go to quickly, go to verse 17, please. 17, I believe it is 17. The Bible says, and Jesus asked them, where are you? What are you discussing together? Walking along with it, they were sort of a murmuring, gumbling, Jesus could have done better, he could have told a lie, or I don't know what they were talking about. Jesus was, what are you discussing together with you as you're walking along? They did not know that was Jesus. They didn't recognize him. They stood still. Still their face cast down. In one translation say cast down. Cast down means very discouraged. All the hopes and ambition, everything is gone. Cast down. Today morning, read the chapter clearly to understand the full picture if you do not know the Bible. But the face was down. Looking down. All the hopes have gone. You feel like a failure. You feel like everything is lost. Nothing can be done. Nobody can help you. Nothing can be done. That is a negative thought devil put into your heart completely. Nothing can be done. It's all I'm having all this trouble. All this trouble in my family. All this trouble in my body. All this thing, your face down. But Jesus is very happy to engage in conversation. Jesus is very good. The God the Almighty always want to pick a quarrel with you sometimes or pick a conversation with you. What's going on here? What's going on here? And they stood, they just faces downcast. Because until then, when Jesus was there, they were looking at the face of Jesus because he had an answer for everything. But now Jesus is died, Jesus was crucified. I don't know what happened to him. They were all completely cast down, looking down, no solution. This morning, recent Savior is in front of you. The Lord God risen. He's not ended up at the cross. Yes, he ended up in the cross, but he rose again from the death unto life. And he's the Lord God who is alive and he's walking with you. He's in front of you. He's, why do you have your face down? Cheer up. Please tell your neighbor, cheer up. <laughs> See, Jesus wants to encourage. Jesus wants to involve. What is happening? 
Oh, you do not know, are you a stranger? Do you not what happened in Jerusalem? This Jesus was a noble man. He was a great man and he was a prophet. But the mouth didn't say he was a savior. He was the Messiah. He didn't say that one. That word came from Jesus. But they said he's a prophet. He was a good man. He was a great man. He was a prophet. But they didn't say he was the savior. He was the Messiah. Jesus sat up and said to them, he spoken the word to these people. He taught them completely. Suddenly he's preaching about the scripture. Did not the scripture say, you shall become the head and not become the tail? No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You know, Jesus was talking. This is what said from the prophet to now. It was all fulfilled. Jesus should rise again from the death. But what do you know, boys, all these things? They did not recognize who they are talking to. This morning, folks, I want to encourage you. In the midst of all your problems, let your face not be downcast because the risen Lord, the mighty one of Israel is standing by your side to lift you up. Cheer up, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. Don't be downcast. Don't be downcast. I am risen. I am risen. I am here. You know, and this goes on to say, and verse 25, can you skip the word verse 25, please? Sir? Verse 25, can you put verse 25? You know, if I ask somebody, I minister to people, I counsel people, but if I ask them, they will hit me. How foolish you are. That's what Jesus said. How foolish you are. I deal with people who are poor to well-educated and highly qualified people. But sometimes I wanted to use the same word what Jesus used. How foolish, how stupid you are. That's exactly what Jesus used. He said to them, how foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe. See, you can achieve greater things by just believing the Lord God is for me. Yes, it is real. I have this problem, but he is so real than anything else. He is more real than this pulpit. He is real than this microphone. I can see he is more real. He is for me. Please tell him never, I am not going to be slow. Slow is understanding, because you know what? If you're slow, you can't get there. America, great discussion about gun laws. Who take the gun first and shoot the person down? <laughs> Don't be slow. Don't be slow. I'm understanding. Here is the prophet. You know, here is the Lord God Almighty standing in front of me. You know, Jesus went down to say, you know what the beautiful thing was? Verse 28, come here. Verse 28, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued you, continued. Ah, oh yeah. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted. You see, this week we are having an action there. How many of you are going to act on that play? Yes, put your hand up boldly. <laughs> Jesus was the best actor. <laughs> In the Bible says, Jesus acted. Oh no, I can't be in that play. I can't be doing this one. But Jesus put on an act. You know what he did? Jesus was going though, as if I'm going to. You know, it's a sort of a take an exit. If I put it in the modern thing, in the, you're going on the uh, A666. And, uh, and all the disciples are taking an exit four or whatever it is. They are going an exit. Another exit they have taken. But Jesus saw, I'm on the motorway. He's watching what the guys are going to say. They say, no, it is too late. You can't travel now. You come with us and stay. That is the best thing you can do. God, come and stay with us. You are not understood. God, come and stay with us. You know, Jesus was acting though. He was going, Jesus' heart was to be with you. Jesus' heart was to be with in the midst of your problem. Jesus' heart is there to be in the middle of your problem. Jesus' heart is to there to encourage you. Jesus' heart is there to have compassion for you. Jesus' heart is to do a miracle for you. Jesus' heart is to do the greatest thing in your life. But Jesus is acting as he's watching you. Please tell anybody he's watching you. He's watching you for every move. But best, good luck to them. You know what they did? Oh, we liked what he thought. He was preaching the Bible. They didn't fully understand. They thought, 
well, this is a good man who's going on his own. Let him come with us and stay with us, please. You know, sometimes God wanted us only that from us. It's not a greater understanding. God, let me stay with you. Let him come and stay with us. And eventually you found Jesus, broke the bread, and they realized it is Jesus. It is Jesus. And Jesus vanished from the place. Jesus gone. This morning I want to encourage you, my folks, in the midst of your problem, in the midst of your difficulties, he is standing in front of you. Your face is downcast, but God is in the purpose and plan. God, come and stay with us. You know, we can say, you know, you don't go. Come and stay with us. It's the night is past. He will come. He will reveal himself to you. In the midst of the problem, he is in my boat. You know, he looked though he was a stranger, but he was not a stranger. God, I am, see, read the word of God. Pastor Sam is preaching this word because, you know, I didn't go to Bible college. I love this word. God, I learned in another language, but I am preaching in another language. I said, God, I love the word. Teach me, God. Teach me, God. Teach me, God. Read and day and night and night and night and read the word of God. If you are a young Christian, you, you need to understand. You need to rely on the word of God. Read day and night, day and night, day and night. Read the word of God. Right from Genesis to Revelation, read and put them into the heart. They come alive because God's word is so powerful. This is God who is standing in front of me. Your action will be relevant. You know, she, touched, she loved Jesus, Mary the Magdalene. Let me pray quickly, say this quickly. Mary the Magdalene was in front of Jesus because she went to the grave to find Jesus. Bless you. <laughs> Jesus went there to find, you know, Magdalene went to the grave to find Jesus. But she thinks that she's the gardener. The Lord God who taught you everything there. And this is... A, the cross, the, 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 the grave is empty and he's walking around in the garden. She's walking around in the garden of and to realize suddenly she see turn around, the Bible says she turn around, she seen but she's the gardener. Do you know where you carried my Jesus? She's looking for a dead body. Where you carried him? And let me show me, and I will go and take him. I will minister to a dead body. But Jesus said, I am the Jesus who is risen. I am the Jesus. Immediately, you know what she said? Rabuni, mean great teacher. Say so in godly principles, when you reach God, when you read the word of God, this all through Magdalene spent all the days with Jesus, going to the church. She went to Farnworth Christian Fellowship for several years and several weeks and several months. House group after house group, things after things, and you've done everything there. But sometimes we miss, oh, he's a gardener. I want to tell you, the, 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 the humanity sometimes don't understand who is this God we are serving. He's so powerful, so marvelous. And we think he's a gardener. Hallelujah. There was a blind man. Jesus was passing by. He said, I could not see. I know most of us here, we enjoy looking at the screen, looking at the songs, looking at the instrument, looking at the stage, and see, he was a blind man. He could not see. But he heard the noise. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. What he did, I can't even see. Whether he's a devil, <clears throat> whether he's a ghost or a gardener or anything, she heard only Jesus of Nazareth is passing. <clears throat> he's shouting all the more. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of David, have mercy on me. You know, we become very sophisticated in our life. Oh, we want to be prim and proper. It's good, nothing wrong with that one. And when we cry unto God, here I am, you know, my need is great, just I wanted to see, he shouts aloud. It captures the heart. See, God blessed him. His eyesight came back. God wants us to here is a woman with all the pain and sorrow. She wasted all her money, resources. She's seen every specialist, every doctor. 
with the issue of blood and she lost all her strength, all her finances, all her wealth. There was no NHS system there. She spent all the money. She had the Jesus is passing by. Jesus is in the town. She ran and ran and ran and ran. I'll touch the hem of the garment. This morning I want to encourage you, my friends. The blind man cried all the cried all the loud until Jesus touched him. The woman did not stop running. She ran and ran and ran and ran until she touched the hem of the garment. You know what happened? The power, Jesus said, something was released from me. The power was released. Jesus looked like stupid. Because you know why everybody was pushing Jesus in those days. There is no great security guards there. You touch me. All these people are pushing you up and down and somebody touch you. Because her touch was different. She was touching with the great faith. I am going to pull down from Jesus Christ today my healing. Because she recognized who she is standing in front of. When we fail to recognize, you know what happened? This is another service. Another time. Another one. In her boat is in turmoil and difficulties. In the midst of all the turmoil. And you know, the Bible says the, the boat was buffeted, buffeted, battered. See, one wind from here, one wind from there, is going to drown and difficulty, all the thing that is facing. But Jesus in his compassion is walking towards the boat. The very boat you are in, the very situation you are in, Jesus is walking towards your boat. Shall we stand before the living God? Shall we stand before the living God? The very boat, the very boat you think, and you think that is a ghost. Six hours ago, six hours ago, you were standing with him on the shore. You know, this goes on to say, whatever the shore you are in, Jesus died and rose again. The disciple Peter said, let us go fishing. Everybody also said, I'm coming. If you are a leader, you can't see what Jesus is doing. And you go fishing. Many people say, I will also come fishing with you. But on the morning, Jesus is standing on the shore. They didn't recognize him, who he was. Have you got any fish? Have you got any fish? This is risen Savior. Wounds on his hand, wound on his side, and but still healed and risen from the dead.